accept it from people out there. They're just fed up, Alex. They want to be left alone. They, they want to be in their homes, have their car, go to and get their little jobs and come home and just be left alone. And I think that's happening to Americans all over the country these days. You know, you I, I didn't good? think of that. Uh, your Skype's working. Leanne's McAdoo uh, is there in St. Louis right now. Her Skype's breaking up, but she's out there at the landfill where they've got all that nuclear waste. That's right. And, and, of course, for those that don't know, there's a huge cave complex uh, there in St. Louis. You've got offices there, broadcast from there part of the year when you're not out in L.A. Uh, but, George Norrie, just to add to the apocalyptic atmosphere in the world with the economy and the derivatives and the open borders and the collapsing countries, for much of the world, we're already in a depression. We see softening job numbers, manufacturing numbers. Yellen says at the Fed they'll continue QE because of that. Uh, what is it like, though, to be close to underground fires <laughs> approaching the giant nuke waste dump? And they are very, very close to where I am. The airport, which is near Bridgeton, um, is where this landfill dump is. And by that dump, which is underground, the fire's burning underground, believe it or not, has been doing it for years, is this nuclear waste dump. And the fire is getting closer and closer and closer. Well, we did a national story on that a couple weeks ago. And uh, the St. Louis media has been doing it as well. But it's starting now to get national recognition. And the EPA is finally involved in this, trying to figure out how are they going to handle this. Back during the 1940s, when we were creating the atomic bomb, St. Louis was a very influential city with scientists and people like that working on the Manhattan Project. And they used a lot of land here for dump. And it it's, couldn't get into the water supply. It could be a disaster. Now, we've seen what happened in Fukushima, where the experts are now beginning to say that there's a higher incidence of cancer among children. I think that same thing could happen here. Uh, that landfill dump from where I am sitting right now, Alex, is about 15 miles away. That's 15 minutes in a car. That's not far at all. But I really feel sorry for the people who live in that community and in that area because that's pretty heavily populated. And, uh, I mean, it is absolutely a biblical proportion nightmare if that fire gets to that waste dump, which is bad all by itself. But if the fire gets to that nuclear waste dump, God knows what could happen. Well, that's my issue with nuclear power, is that if they contained it right, if they developed it right, I wouldn't be against it. But they don't retire reactors after 30 years. They're falling apart. They're having more and more leaks. So the answer of the Japanese, U.S. government, EU governments, as you know, is to just say we're turning the alarms off or okay higher radiation levels are now safe we're raising the allowable levels and just saying oh don't be conspiracy theorists then that makes me worry about other technologies that make atomic technology you know 80 years old look tame mm -hmm. look at the hadron collider uh look at what a lot of scientists say could create a black hole a strangelet a chain sure. reaction explosion and, and the other scientists say well it might but it's a low probability we're still going to do it. I'm not against progress, but you've talked a lot about this on your radio show. I call it that Atlantean moment, whether Atlantis was real or not. And I tend to think it was real. Plato was a real historian. He said it was. They were advanced. They did something. It blew up their entire huge island that was a small continent and rained pieces of it down across the world, according to the ancients. Well, regardless of whether it was real or not, aren't we now pretty much the new Atlantis and are approaching that Atlantean moment? Well, there's no question about it. The uh, nuclear power plants, uh, many of them have been built on earthquake fault lines. It's crazy. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And as you know, if the power goes out and those generators eventually have a certain time life to it, you need to cool those rods, those radioactive rods. And if you can't do it uh, because the power's gone out, as happened in Fukushima, you are headed for a nightmare, and those possibilities are all out there. So why we continue to build these plants when you can harness uh, energy from the sun in a very cheap, creative way is beyond me. I mean, wh what I would do is I would build huge solar panels, put them up in space, 
and beam down signals to generators and to almost like capacitors that will store energy here in the United States. I mean, the sun is going to be around for a long, long time. Let's take advantage of it. Well, as you know, a lot of top engineers and scientists say that plan is one of the better plans. Now, George, you don't like talking about yourself, but one reason I called you to book you on the show, and I appreciate you coming on, is I saw articles a few weeks ago, several of them, Business Insider, World Net Daily, a couple others, that George Norrie is thinking about running for president. So when we come back from break, I want to ask you about that, then I want to shift gears into one of your big passions, and it's one of mine as well, really because I've been listening to you on it, is EMP, whether it be a Carrington event from the sun or, or whether it be artificial, uh, sure. the latest on your movement with others that I know has got uh, a lot of filmmakers, a lot of people in Congress involved. I'm in a film coming out uh, pretty soon uh, that's been produced uh, with the Norrises and others that uh, gets into this. I can't wait till I can show folks the trailer. It's pretty powerful. But there are movements to try to uh, protect this planet, asteroids. How, how do you see this civilization becoming a type one civilization? George Norrie, host of Coast to Coast AM, coast to coast am.com is our guest. He also hosts a popular TV show. You can find out more uh, on his site as well. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we steam towards Halloween. They are now saying that it is transphobic if you have a Caitlyn Jenner costume. So they force feed a cultural icon, try to make us obsess on something that maybe 1% of the population is involved in, in this cultural hijacking, try to make our kids learn all about it. And I'm not attacking anybody, but this is force feeding, where even South Park is sick of it. She's, she's given all these awards, courage awards, and then you want to be that person at Halloween and they say, no, you can't, and you can't be a cowboy or a geisha girl. You can't wear a sombrero. You can't be a Native American. Because, I mean, they've canceled in Austin yoga studios having Eastern-themed parties on Halloween where people dress up in Eastern clothes. That's like saying you can't have a party with togas, it's anti-Greeks. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's a cultural party. But it's like Melissa Harris-Perry said on MSNBC two days ago. She said, you can't say Paul Ryan's a hard worker. That takes away from black slaves. What? It is an attack on speech itself. George, I want to get into your discussion of running for president. I want to get into how you launched uh, this new dating site, paranormal dating site. I want to get into some fun stuff as well, obviously, and then open the phones up. The toll-free number to join us. Your questions or comments for the great George Norrie, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Uh, but first off, I know you're nonpartisan, but you do promote the First Amendment. What do you think is going on with political correctness where they're saying don't say mother or father, don't say he or she, because just being a he or she might hurt somebody else? Uh, this isn't tolerance. This is saying that we must adopt whatever new bizarreness we're told to, uh, you know, banning brown paper bags in Seattle. How far is this going to go? We see the calls for restricting the Drudge Report. We see calls in Congress for restricting free speech on talk radio. Is this the establishment's response to the fact that they can't compete with us in the arena and the free market of ideas? Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, you can't even say God in school anymore without some teachers going ballistic, doing all kinds of things uh, with Matt Drudge. You know, Matt was a pioneer. He was the one that broke some huge stories a long time ago and used the Internet in a very effective way to do that. You can't muffle him. I mean, what are they afraid of with things like that? But, I mean, we have become so concerned about stepping on special interest groups and we have forgotten morality and what this country was all about and, and i think it's just crazy alex we've got to get back to our grassroots again as a nation and do things that are just common sense right i mean which we're not doing anymore um the presidential push to try to get me to run for office uh, you are you are absolutely right i am nonpartisan. i am not a republican i'm not a democrat I'm uh, probably more a libertarian, but I'm uh, generally independent. However, if you're going to run for president in the United States, you really have to be a Democrat or a Republican on those parties. Look, they're about the same, right? 
but you have to do that because that's what garners the biggest votes. There has been a group that has asked me and wanted me to push for this to run on uh, on my platform for several reasons. One is um, got a lot of common sense. I have been a talk show host and a media person since I was 19 years old. And what I have seen worldwide, wherever I've gone, is that nobody is doing things with a common sense for people. And my campaign had, uh, I jumped into the noose, would have been to develop programs based on what would help Americans. And that would be to do away with the Internal Revenue Service, to go to more of a fair tax um, based on a sales tax, helping people who don't make a lot of money so that they would get cash vouchers. But to do away with that, you wouldn't even have to file an income tax anymore. Our defense, as you said, I've been in the Navy nine years as a naval officer. We cannot continue to occupy all these other countries. There are some countries that simply do not work with, like we do. You cannot make them a democracy. We saw what happened in Libya, in Iraq, where Saddam Hussein, though he wasn't a Boy Scout, and make no mistake about that, at least kept the lid on that country. Look what's happened to it now. It's fallen apart. Afghanistan, it's fallen apart. Every Syria, we're getting involved in that. It's falling apart. Every place we go, these countries have fallen apart. We learn nothing from Vietnam. So what I would propose as a uh, commander in chief is that we no longer become the aggressors, but the defenders of people's rights around the world. We would have the greatest military ever. I would continue to spend on new technology and building up our armed forces, but we're not going to occupy countries anymore. You know, we're, we're going to help the world. I mean, if the, the uh, uh, Boko Haram group in Africa is maiming children and stuff, we're going to go in there and stop that. That's what we should be doing. We shouldn't be occupying countries and taking over um, economically. We've got to get jobs back in the United States. We've got to get manufacturing back here. We have to create an incentive for corporations to want to stay here. And we're not doing any of that. Health care. Throw this thing out the window. Yes. If you need a new kidney, Alex, you shouldn't be denied because you can't afford it. But for crying out loud, let's not force feed insurance policies down people's throats and everything else. I mean, so everything needs to be revamped. And so I did. I did consider that. It's getting late. The clock is ticking. I would have to take a leave from coast to coast, and I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, but I probably could get the nomination, the Democratic nomination, and then I'd either have to run off against uh, Mr. Carson or Mr. Trump or maybe even Jeb Bush. Well, George, you've got the listeners, tens of millions of them, that would actually come out and support you. You're a smart guy. You destroy them in the debates. Uh, I mean, I tell you, you would actually have a shot. But regardless, you'd be able to inject a lot of information into the debates. I would just be afraid they'd try to shut you out and keep you out, uh, and so then it wouldn't be effective. But if you could get in the debates... If you could get out there on the road, and if you got the coverage, you'd be a real contender, and then it would be worth it uh, just to be able to reach a new audience. But I tell you, you've got tens of millions of people tuning in right now, and so many times you've helped inform the public on the model states, Health Emergency Powers Act, forced inoculations. You've helped expose the whole Panopticon spy grid. I mean, the Second Amendment issues you've defended, the GMO crops you've exposed. With the guest, I mean, you've been a game changer, that key word, that key compound word, over and over again. And We would be a very busy administration, Alex. And, and another thing that I would do is build my cabinet with the best people. I could care less what political party they came from. You know, I'm not going to pick all Democrats. I, I would pick people who are the best at what they do. That's good management. Management puts in people who are good not bad. And what we're happening now is you're doing all these political favors and we're putting in people. If, a, if the Republican wins, they're all Republicans who uh, get into a cabinet. I would pick the best people from all walks of life to get involved in building a country that we were once proud of. Well, that's what George Washington did. He wanted political parties outlawed. Well, that's pretty, uh, 
pretty dramatic, but uh, you